Hey, how are you? Greetings from Venezia. I've pretty much been living in Venice, Italy since this past September, but this will be the first video I have released from Venice. And that's because it's a little boring, at least compared to a lot of the content I usually put out. But I figured I should at least put out one video and this is it, where I'll be breaking down the pros and cons of living here full time. First off, the biggest pro, city's beautiful and it's historic and it's unique. Probably the most unique city in the world. There's no cars. So everything that comes in, everything that goes out, goes by boat. You got DHL boats, you got trash boats, you got fear boats, you got produce boats. I see ambulance boats and you just have pleasure boats. I see some of the locals like whipping their mini motor boats around the canals, like pulling up the bars. That's pretty sick. Ciao! Instead of going on a, a bar crawl, they literally go on a personal bar cruise. Hey bro, I live right up there. If you guys want to party, like, you have a sick boat. I don't know if you saw my old series, Boat Facts, but yeah, there's a lot of time to spout out boat facts. Tisha was heartbroken when her husband Jimmy went to jail for fraud and the government seized the Tisha one. But thankfully, she was able to use the money he stashed in the Cayman Islands to move to Venice and buy the Tisha 2, where she now gets Aperol spritzed every day. I still haven't taken a gondola ride. Those are like a ripoff. 80 euros for a half hour, no thank you. The public transit here is also pretty cool. Instead of hopping on the New York subway, which is hell on earth, you're just hopping on a boat. I have the front row, which means I just get a beautiful view. But in the back, you can get a little crowded. You gotta wear a mask. So it's not always glamorous, but when you're in the front row, it is nice. So yeah, I love boats and it's just a fascinating place visually. Another pro are chiquetis. Love chiquetis. They're kind of like Venetian tapas. Little pieces of bread with all different types of toppings. Probably like a thousand different types of chiquetis. Burrata, ham, and truffle. And this is maybe like a langoustine and some green sauce and mushroom. I've never met a chiquetti I didn't like, except for one that had green olives and tuna. I was no bueno. Is it no bueno in Italian too? I still like can only speak Spanish. I speak like five words of Italian. I have a new uh, slang term, Betty Chiquetti. Just someone who's clearly been eating too many chiquetti. I mean, I'm kind of a Betty Chiquetti. It doesn't have to be used in a mean way. It can be like a friendly way. Hey, hey, this is my buddy. He's a little bit of a Betty Chiquetti, but he's a good guy. Also, their drink of choice here is the Aperol Spritz. I'm a big Spritz guy now, although I actually prefer Campari Spritz. Slightly more alcohol and Campari than Aperol. It just, it, it packs more of a kick. And what do you call someone who's always drinking spritzes? An Apertivo Stevo. You like that? Uh, some other pros. It's a great location in Europe. For example, over the holidays, I took a, a train up to the mountains, the Dolomite Mountains, and went snowboarding for a few days. Good morning, skiers. Looks like we got ourselves another viral one out there. We have 40 confirmed cases of Omicron on the slope. So if you are immunocompromised or unvaccinated, we just ask you to stick to the black diamonds where the slopes are too steep to contract the disease. Happy skiing. Dolomites are hands down the most beautiful mountains I've seen in my life. Might be the best chair I've, yeah, yep. This is the best chair I think uh, I've ever met. But then in the summer, you're very close to the beach. You can hop on a ferry and you're at the beach in a half hour. There's this island called the Lido. It's almost like the Cape Cod of Venice. And uh, I got to make it out there a couple times in the fall. Now it, it's too cold. It's actually very chilly and the insulation in my apartment sucks. So I'm usually always pretty cold, but my apartment is a plus. It's one third the price what I was paying in New York for an apartment the same size, but newer and nicer and a great location. I got views of like a Knight Templar temple. Shut the fuck up, I'm trying to watch Netflix. You can also just hop on a quick train to Milan or hop on a quick train to Rome or to Bologna. I went there because Bologna, that, they have the best food in all of Italy. And the best way to experience that food is to go to an Italian food theme park. All right, we're going through the pasta curtains and oh yeah, it's a giant block of Parmigiano, a Reggiano. Ooh, cheese caves. 
What are some other pluses? Oh yeah, incredible football team, Venezia FC. I don't think they're actually that good in terms of like ranking in the league, but they play at the sixth stadium all the way at the tip of the island. And there's a moat around it, so you can just pull up to the game in a boat. Hopping off right at the main entrance. That is sick. I went to one of the games. It was a lot of fun. They serve beers. They also serve pizza. Really bad pizza. I'm talking like a, a 2.4. Some of the worst pizza I've had in my life. But very fun games to go to. They got three Americans on the squad, so go USA. And their jerseys, I guess, are some of the most sought after jerseys in all of soccer. At least according to all the people who reach out begging me to get one for them because you can't even get a jersey back in the US. It costs a pretty penny, maybe 95 euros, but um, if you want to pay me 200 euros, I'll pick one up for you, no problem. Uh, they also have a basketball team. Whoa! All day! Basketball games aren't too much fun, but uh, you can get three beers and a Fanta there. Sanbira un Fanta? Six euros. Uh, Sanbir? San. Oh no, uh, Trace. Oh man, I was, I was speaking Chinese. I'm losing it. So that's nice for nostalgia's sake. All right, now onto the cons. It's probably the most touristy place in Europe. So it doesn't really feel as much like a real city as it feels like Disneyland. Even when you take the tram in, sort of like in uh, the show Westworld, you take the tram into Westworld, you hop off, nothing seems real. Locals are leaving the city fast. I think there's only 50,000 left and the ones that are still here probably work in the tourism industry. Apparently Elton John lives in Venice. I was hoping to run into him, but no luck. Along with all the tourists, you get crazy crowds. So sometimes you're just trying to walk around the city and it's like you're waiting in fucking line to get on an amusement park ride when I'm just trying to walk down the street. Another con, it's very quiet. There's not much of a nightlife. After 10 p.m., it's a ghost town. What is going on? I don't know. Nothing really. You know, this is a big destination in Europe, but it's not a party destination. Even during Carnival, which is supposed to be the craziest weekend of the whole year, it was not that crazy. Sure, everybody was wearing crazy costumes. It's me and Julia Black. Wow, dragging a wagon. Rasputin? No. And here we have a ring Mona Lisa mashup. Like in Hong Kong Sevens, everybody wears crazy costumes to raise their tits off and chuck piss, do drugs, get in fights. But at Carnival, people just get dressed up like Squid Game VIPs and pose for photos. So yeah, I wasn't really impressed with Carnival. I mean, the most exciting part for me was probably telling one of the three wise men he was canceled. But you know, COVID could have put a damper on the festivities this year. And hey, I will admit, some of the costumes were pretty impressive. I bet they put a lot of work into them, and I respect that. Can I touch your nose? Yes. Oh, wow. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, cool. I should also note that the food in Venice is not nearly as good as the rest of Italy. It's very seafood centric and don't get me wrong, I love seafood, especially New England seafood. But here we're talking dishes like anchovies and tomato sauce, salted cod, sweet and sour sardines. Hey, I'm not a picky eater. I will gladly eat it, but not my favorite. So instead I've been eating a bunch of Chinese food. I've even gone to Burger King a few times just to take a break from Venetian food. We got the Parmesan Reggiano burger here, bacon, caramelized onions, arugula, and some sort of Parmesan cream sauce. Everything about this burger is good, except for the actual burger. It's good bread. I love the arugula, I love the Parmesan sauce, and I love the caramelized onions. But the burger itself is just dry and bland. So that's gonna knock it down to 2.5 balls. Another con are the seagulls. The seagulls here are savage. One of them swooped down for a friend of mine's food, missed the food and ended up just biting her fucking hand, 
her hand was bleeding, she probably got bird flu. That's terrifying. They've come for me too. I like to walk and eat. You can't walk and eat here because they'll just swoop down. Um, it's not a rare sight to just see them eating a pigeon in one of the canals. So that's terrifying. Fuck the gulls, ducks, you're off the hook. Everyone's been asking me, they're like, oh, does it smell like shit all the time? It doesn't really smell like shit that often. There's a couple times I've like walked down the wrong alleyway and it, yeah, it did start to smell like low tide, but that hasn't been a problem around where I live. It also hasn't flooded yet. I'm actually pretty disappointed. I wanted to have to put on those fisherman pants, you know, and just fucking trudge through the water, swim down the street, but nope, haven't had to do that yet. And the last con is that there's not a lot of open space. So if you're trying to exercise or do something active, it can be tough. I did dry January and you know, I was on a health kick. I was trying to go jogging. I went for one jog around the city. It did not turn out so well because all the streets are just narrow, packed with tourists. And then there's a fuck ton of bridges. So I was just moving at a snail's pace. Eventually, I found out that I could just um, jog across the bridge that links Venice to the mainland. It's also a highway, um, so you know there are some cons to that, but if you go during sunset, it is beautiful. So in conclusion, I would recommend visiting Venice 1000%. It's just not the most exciting place to live full time, and I think I'll be moving back to the US sometime this summer. But no promises, especially seeing I just realized that just like Frank the Tank, I now have my very own pizza window too, which is a game changer. Excuse me, could I do one slice of the salami? Mm, yep, that one, see. Si. Grazie. Fresh out the oven and made with real salami. None of that trailer trash pepperoni stuff you guys used back in the US. So who knows, maybe I'll end up staying in Venice for a decade. 8.3 taste-wise, 13.8 convenience-wise.